um, thank you for the introduction. Let me just share that, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, also, um, you know, my, my Korean is terrible. So thank you for allowing me to speak in English with you today. Um, I'll try and speak slowly so uh, so you can all understand me. So thank you for the introduction. Um, uh, as, as you just said, um, I'm the senior technical specialist um, for APJ and I'm located in uh, Australia. And today I'll be talking about um, not only our, our Geomex platform, but our SMI platform as well. If I get the slide to advance, there we go. Um, so just a brief overview of who Nanostring is, um, if you're not familiar with us. Um, we're based out of Seattle, Washington. Um, in the United States, we've got about 800 employees. And um, the first platform that we launched in 2008 was our Encounter system. Some of you may be familiar with this platform. Um, it's a bulk expression profiling um, system. So we're able to look at uh, you know, roughly 900 genes um, from a single experiment. Uh, we work in FFPE and we do direct molecule counting. So no enzymology, no type of um, you know, uh, amplification of signal. And we're quantitating each of those individual molecules using an imaging based platform. And so the Encounter system is really the foundational technology that we used to build our two spatial platforms. All right. Now, as uh, some of you, some of you are probably familiar with, um, in 2020, Nature uh, in method of the year um, called spatial transcriptomics, the method of the year, um, and we've been very uh, successful in this space. And a lot of Korean customers um, are using our Geomix uh, DSP technology. A lot of interesting studies coming out of Korea. And of course, we like to see that continue with our Cosmix um, SMI. So the Geomix system, I'm going to talk about that today. I'll give you an overview of the technology, how these two platforms are complementary. Um, obviously, it's uh, kind of difficult to choose a platform right now because there's a lot of options. Um, but basically, um, you know, um, at Nanostring, what we've been able to do and with our experience with the Geomix system and with the Cosmix and the Encounter system is we understand how to build these systems. We understand how to support them. Um, and we understand how to get really good data into our customer hands. So the spatial biology market as we see it is starting to shift into two very distinct bins, right? So customers want two things and you'll hear these, these, these two phrases quite often. So there's a, a desire for plex and also a desire for resolution. So currently in the market, there is not a single technology that can answer all of the plex and resolution needs that uh, researchers require at the current moment. Um, but at Nanostring, we have the Geomix and Cosmix platforms, which are complementary that can answer um, these issues. So on the plex side of things, um, if you need unbiased discovery, if you need whole transcriptome type of approach, um, you need to use the Geomix instrument. But if we're using whole transcriptome, we cannot get down to a single cell subcellular type of resolution. Right? The trade off to get down to single cell subcellular resolution is a limit in plex. And that's true for all in situ imaging platforms. And the reason that is, is because we use an image based capturing quantitation. And there's issues with spectral overlap and optical crowding when we're using an imaging based approach. So, so that's the sacrifice. So with the Geomix instrument, we're using a direct digital readout, and I'll show you what that chemistry looks like, but we can do whole transcriptome analysis, um, but we're selecting regions of interest on the tissue, and we're using more of a multicellular approach. So if we're looking at a tumor, tumor microenvironment, for example, if we're interested in a specific CD8 population, we can mask over those cells, we can mask over the tumor, and we can collect whole transcriptome information directly out of those. Whereas if we use the Cosmix technology, we are limited to 1000 plex, which is best in class um, at the moment. And we can answer questions like cell typing. Uh, we can look at cell mapping uh, type of um, approaches on a single cell and subcellular uh, type of resolution. So the main differences between the two platforms, which I'll try and identify here. So on the left-hand side is your Geomix instrument. As I mentioned before, this can do whole transcriptome. And also in terms of throughput, so you can process anywhere from four to 12 slides per day, depending on the efficiency of your workflow and whether or not you automate it and have a like a bond RX instrument sitting upstream. So this is your workhorse instrument um, and it's really applicable to a lot of translational work um, that's being done. So you can use TMA format and get through a lot of samples um, in a given week. And you're looking at the differential expression between sample types using the Geomix instrument. Whereas with the Cosmics, obviously the resolution is better down to single cell subcellular. 
You can scan the entire tissue section, not looking at a region of interest. You have high multiplexing capabilities, at least for the Insight2 platform, that's a thousand plex. Um, both platforms are multiomic as well, so we can quantitate RNA and protein on both platforms. And for the cosmics, we're looking at the differential expression between cells and neighboring cells. So what's unique about the Geomix instrument is the ability to do feature-driven profiling. So selecting regions of interest on the tissue, um, we can do that in a really highly uh, specific and sensitive manner. So in this example here, we have a sagittal section of a mouse brain that's stained with a nucleic acid stain and alpha synuclein, um, which is important uh, in, uh, in the hippocampus and important for uh, learning and memory. And what you can see here is using the Geomix instrument on the left side, we can actually outline individual strata layers and functional units within the tissue. And the ability to do that is very important because we know that function um, is related to structure within a tissue. And with the Geomix, we can look at uh, whole transcriptome kind of analyses, pathway analysis, and understanding the functional changes and differences that are occurring within the tissue. Now, if you wanna do a deep dive into the specific cell populations within that area, that's a cosmics experiment, which you can see on the right where we're able to outline individual cells, individual cell populations, and how they're sitting next to each other and how they're behaving in space. So really the take home message for the Geomix instrument is that it gets you rapid results very quickly. It accelerates your discovery by combining whole, um, the speed of whole transcriptome um, atlas or whole transcriptome analysis and whole slide imaging together for a digital type of output. All right, so I'm gonna focus on the Geomix now. Um, so the types of samples that you can run on the system, it's extremely robust. So that includes core needle biopsies, um, slide mounted tissues, that includes organoids and spheroids. So for groups that are working in precision oncology or using patient explants to screen novel drugs or therapies, um, you know, uh, we can use that on the system. We can profile those on the system. Fresh frozen tissue, you can use as well. FFPE tissue blocks, as I mentioned before, which is where nanostring is extremely strong, and also the use of tissue microarrays. So in any given uh, workflow, we can do 50 cores roughly on any given slide, and we can process up to four slides at one time. So if you're considering that, we can look at patient match pairs across almost 200 samples in a single geomix run. So again, that high throughput. Um, we also don't use any sort of slide-based array technologies that you may be familiar with. We just use a standard pathology slide. And the scanning area on the Geomix instrument is roughly 35 mil by 14 mil. And as long as you can place a tissue within that green scanning frame that you see on the bottom right, we can profile that tissue on the system. So the Geomix, I'll go into a little bit more detail about the workflow here in a second, but essentially it's an in-situ hybridization type of workflow. You'll place your tissue onto a positively charged pathology slide. We'll stain it with two types of reagents. And then we take a, 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 um, um, a high, well, a, a, up to a four color um, fluorescent image of the tissue section. And then we highlight regions of interest, which you can see outlined here in these circles. Right. And, then, yep. and then what we do is we shine UV light over that area. We collect barcodes off of either protein or RNA, which I'll show you in a second. And then those barcodes are processed to be run on either the end counter system or on uh, a NGS Illumina sequencer. Um, so we stain the tissue section with two types of reagents, the first of which are imaging reagents or morphology markers. So we have a four channel microscope on the system that excites in the FITC, Psi3, Psi5, and Texas Red channels. And the platform is completely open. So if you have a clone that is staining a specific cell population in your workflow, if you can conjugate it to a floor that excites in one of those channels that I mentioned, we can use it to visualize those cells on the platform. We also stain the tissue with our profiling reagents for either RNA or protein at the same time. And then the tissue is ready to go and it's loaded onto the Geomix instrument. So in terms of quantitation of either protein or RNA, on the protein side, we use a series of mouse or rabbit monoclonal labeled antibodies. And on the RNA side, we use a series of in-situ hybridization probes. And we're um, directly probing for those mRNA species directly in the tissue. So we're not releasing them onto a gridded array, it's probed directly in the tissue. So a high degree of sensitivity and specificity with our probe architecture. How we quantitate either protein or RNA is by the collection of known DSP barcodes. 
that are covalently bound to the in situ hybridization probe or the target antibody via a UV photocleavable linker. So here's an overview of that workflow. Again, you will stain your tissue section with morphology markers up to four colors to visualize the tissue architecture and structure. And then with content for protein or RNA, we then take a high resolution fluorescent image of the tissue and we highlight regions of interest. So again, that could be the tumor tumor microenvironment, for example, which is highlighted in the white circles. The system will identify one of those white circles or those regions of interest. It shines UV light directly over that area, which liberates the barcode off of the tissue. Those barcodes are then collected and deposited into a single well of an on-instrument 96 well plate. That process is then repeated for each region of interest until the experiment is finished. Those barcodes are then collected and processed on either an end counter instrument or an NGS Illumina sequencer. Those file types are then converted into a file type that's recognized by the geomics instrument, and we have an on-instrument bioinformatics pipeline and a suite of visualization tools that you can use to analyze your data. So what's unique about the geomix system is the use of these two digital micro mirror chips. There's two of them that are about the size of a human thumbnail on the system, and they're comprised of millions of tiny little mirrors. And what we're able to do is we're able to bend that UV light to outline non-contiguous regions of tissue. So essentially what we're doing is micro dissection of a tissue using UV light. So what you can see in this example here in the middle is a colorectal cancer sample. All of the tumor cells are stained with pancytokeratin, which you can see in yellow. And we have a CD45 stain in pink. And what the system will then do using those, those micro mirrors is create a mask over the tumor, which all those pancytokeratin labeled tumor cells. We can then flip that mask over to highlight the tumor microenvironment. We shine UV light over that area. We can collect whole transcriptome information. So why that's important is if we were taking a gridded approach and looking at just a whole uh, ROI, so a mixture of different cell populations at once, you would get the profile that you can see on the top right. So it's a mixed signal. Of course, this is important information that you can get, but using the segmentation strategy, so being able to bifurcate between an immune-rich stroma and a tumor, we get specific transcriptional programs that give us a deeper understanding of the biology at play. So the Geomix insert is extremely sensitive and it's the highest sensitivity that you'll see on the market. In this example here, we have a mouse, a sagittal section of a mouse brain that's stained with fluorescently labeled antibodies or morphology markers for a series of different markers. And what we have in the middle panel here is we're masking over specific cell populations, some excitatory neurons, some microglia, inhibitory neurons, et cetera. And the capture efficiency of this particular um, target um, is looking at over 17,000 genes completely captured out of that 18,000 gene panel. And we're looking at roughly over 7,500 genes in each segment that we analyze from. So that's a tremendous amount of sensitivity and a tremendous amount of information that you're capturing from each of those regions that we're profiling from. So the region of interest selection um, is quite robust on the system as well. So the first port of call is a geometric region of interest. So we can go down as small as 50 micron up to 660 micron in diameter. We can do rectangles from 660 micron to 785 micron. And then we can draw freehand polygons over the tissue as well to outline unique areas or, or structures within the tissue. Within that geometric ROI, we can apply a segmentation strategy. So that's you know, outlining the tumor tumor microenvironment, for example. We can also do cell type specific masking. So the tissue does not need to be contiguous or lumped together in order for us to profile it. If you have a cell population of interest, say a CD3 population, which we have here of T cells that are spread across the tissue section, we can mask across those as well. And we can pull that whole transcriptome information or up to 147 proteins. We can also apply a contour strategy. Um, so here we have some tracks that are laid across the tissue boundary. Within each of these tracks, again, we can collect whole transcriptome information. So this is very important across a tissue boundary where we can look at different cell signaling events and changes as we go from disease tissue into normal adjacent tissue or where we see um, different cell types that are coming into contact with, with one another and how their behavior changes. And finally, you can take a gridded approach where we just place a grid over the tissue itself. Within each of these squares, you can also apply that segmentation strategy 
um, and then we can pull whole transcriptome and proteomic information out of that as well. So this is an open source tool um, that we have. It's called the Spatial Organ Atlas. This is an interactive um, story that's hosted from a Minerva software that was developed out of Harvard. This is on our website. And what we're doing here is we're using a whole transcriptome approach um, in both uh, human and mice to profile all of the organs in each of these individual animals. So as I mentioned, this is an open source tool that provides whole transcriptome data sets for our customers to download. We're also uploading custom R scripts as well through our GeoScript hub for customers to um, interact with the data. It also provides you best practices with how to profile specific functional units within that organ. So it gives you a guideline of how to use our geomics instrument and how to best um, plan your particular experiments. So I'll encourage you to go to the website to look at the live version of this. I didn't do this uh, today just because I was worried about bandwidth issues, but I do have some still slides here. So this is a human pancreas, right? And what we've stained this pancreas with is uh, markers for insulin, glucagon, pancytokeratin is a structural one and also a DNA stain. And what we can do here again, using that, um, those micromirrors that I mentioned is apply that segmentation strategy to outline alpha cells, which you can see on the left-hand side, and also beta cells on the right-hand side. So we're segmenting out those individual cell populations within that tissue structure. And of course, what you can see here is differential expression between diff you know, those different areas. So no surprise, the alpha cells, of course, are expressing glucagon and the beta cells are expressing insulin. Um, but this just provides you with a guideline for that and it shows you different signaling pathways um, and other metrics that are important for profiling uh, on the website. So in terms of content, um, we, you know, for protein, uh, we have over 300 antibodies that are optimized in uh, kitted panels and it's completely flexible with how you choose to profile. So there's a central core module that needs to be selected, which is roughly 20 plex. It has our housekeeping antibodies included. Out of this 20 plex core, you can add individual modules, which are roughly 10 plex, and they fall into each of these individual bins. And we can send you this information or you can see it on our website. For our RNA assays, as I've already mentioned, we have whole tran transcriptome for both uh, mouse and humans. And we also have a targeted panel of roughly over 1,800 genes with the cancer transcriptome. What's also been released in January this year are customized uh, de novo panels as well, which can be uh, used as a spike in to any of our existing panels, or they can be used as standalone. This is up to 400 genes and they can be, de be designed for any species. So if you are using non model organisms, C. elegans, um, you know, if you're working in zebrafish, et cetera, we can design specific targets um, that can target those particular organisms now. So both the Geomix and the Cosmix platforms uh, will be uh, automated. So the Lycabond RX system can sit upstream from the Geomix to um, stain all of your tissue samples. This reduces the hands-on time to roughly 30 minutes. So this increases um, you know, the efficiency in your lab and the turnaround time. Uh, we've ran internal metrics looking at slide to slide, user to user, and instrument to instrument variability, and the Pearson's correlation coefficient um, is extremely exceptional. Um, so if you are running a core lab service or in your individual lab, uh, you know that the results that you're getting are going to be highly reproducible, uh, and you can trust the data that you're getting off the system. It's not a finicky type of workflow. Also released this year, uh, which we're very excited about, is something called spatial proteogenomics. Um, so now we can profile whole transcriptome and up to 147 proteins on the same tissue sample. So in this white paper here that you can scan the barcode and download, it's just a change in protocol. We looked at a colorectal cancer sample with 300 micron circular regions of interest. And on the right-hand side here, you can see this differential gene expression and protein expression between the tumor tumor microenvironment um, in this particular um, uh, offering. All right, now I'm gonna shift gears and I'm gonna talk about our new platform, which is launching in Q4 of this year. This is the Cosmic Spatial Molecular Imager. So this is our single cell subcellular platform. And in this example here, you can see, um, you know, this is pretty exciting. So this is um, an example of a, a five micron thick melanoma FFPE sample. This is a 1000 plex RNA panel, over 10 terabytes of data. So it is quite chunky. Uh, but we're looking at half a million cells and over a billion transcripts in a single experiment. Each of these little punctate dots corresponds to an individual mRNA species. 
and we have a cell segmentation algorithm that you can see in cyan that's outlining individual cell populations. And what we can do is we can actually localize those transcripts down to a nuclear, cytoplasmic, and cell membrane area of the cell. That's the level of precision that we have. And this is very exciting as a biologist. So some of the key metrics that we have on the system. Right now we have the largest demonstrated panel that's available on the market. It's a thousand plex RNA panel and it will be increasing. AGBT is being hosted in the US next week. We will be making some announcements around our roadmap to increasing the plex on the panel. Uh, a high degree of sensitivity, we can detect low copy numbers of genes using our system. And it is truly multi-omic as well, just as with the geomics. So we can analyze RNA and protein in both FFPE and fresh frozen tissue. Not all in situ platforms can do this. We have a high degree of resolution, which is also best in class. So we have subcellular three-dimensional resolution of 50 nanometers in the XY direction and 200 to 4 uh, nanometers in the Z direction. All of the analysis, compute, and storage will be hosted on a cloud, um, and there will be specific modules that are uploaded to that uh, to help you with your analysis as well. In terms of the types of samples that will be available on the Cosmics instrument, anything essentially you can run on the Geomix, you will be able to run on the Cosmics. But these are some customer examples that have been run already. So we can do FFPE tissue. This is a melanoma sample. We have a tissue microarray here on the top right. This is from a COVID lug um, infected samples that were run out of Australia. We can run organoids as well, um, and also fresh frozen mouse brain tissues. So in terms of the chemistry, um, we have a cosmics, uh, excuse me, it's built on a in situ hybridization and imaging based chemistry. On the left hand side here, we have a native mRNA species, and there's this target binding domains, which is 35 to 50 nucleotides. We tile about five to eight of these along the mRNA transcript. So we only need about 250 um, bases for everything to go right, but we only need one of these to actually bind to the mRNA in order to detect a signal. So that's very unique. Other technologies need about 1000 KB and uh, over 20 to 30 pro probes to bind in order to get a signal. So because of this type of chemistry, we're able to plex at a very high level. So attached to the target binding domain, we have a readout domain as well, which you can see here. And you can see that there's alternating colors of blue. So the light blue, dark blue, et cetera, we call these spots. And so in order to do the readout, we go through 16 rounds of hybridization and imaging. In four of those rounds, a reporter probe will bind to the readout domain. So in cycle one, for example, we have a red reporter that might be binding here. We quench that image using um, photocleavable uh, UV light. So similar to the GeoMix to quench that signal rapidly. And then in four additional cycles, another reporter will bind to the readout domain. So there will be a four color combination that corresponds to that mRNA analyte at the end of that 16 rounds. On the protein detection side, we use a series of antibodies, of course. There's a site specific linker that binds a readout domain to that antibody. And then again, the process is the same. We go through 16 rounds of cyclic hybridization and imaging with a four color combination that corresponds to that antibody at the end of the cycle. So this just shows you what that process looks like in a little bit more detail. So again, here in readout one, you can see that we have reporters binding to these mRNA species. Those will be cleaved with UV light and washed away. And you can see here that there's a space that's taken up on the readout domain. And subsequent um, cycles will have another reporter bind. And you can see that those are um, those spaces or spots are taken up. Until we get to the end, that four color combination will correspond to that mRNA analyte, and all of those spots will be um, taken up by the readout domain. So, all in all, we have a 64 bit, four color by 16 cycle kind of uh, barcoded um, encoding scheme. So, we also have three dimensional analysis. So, this is a 100 plex um, RNA panel run on FFPE melanoma, five micron thick. And we go through each tissue section and we take eight to nine Z stacks through the tissue. And within each of those Z stacks, we're collecting that 100 RNA species or 1000 plex, depending on the panel that we're running. In the middle here, you can see that this is the nucleus of an individual cell. Once we get to the dorsal view of this cell, you can see that all of that RNA species is actually localized around that individual cell. Some groups are actually doing segmentation just based on the RNA profiling alone. So this is prior to any segmentation. 
We can turn off those genes. So mallet one is a nuclear gene. You can see that it's localized within the nucleus. And the other genes as well are cytoplasmic genes. And as you move through the tissue, you can see that they're localized in those particular compartments. So that demonstrates the kind of precision that we have on the system. This type of three dimensional analysis will be available to you and also you can you know, include it in any of your presentations. Primarily, most of the analysis we do is in two dimensions and I'll show you what that looks like. So, of course, a lot of you I know are using single cell RNA seq. Um, you know, the endpoint for any single cell RNA seq experiment is a UMAP, of course. And once we get to this endpoint, we can identify specific novel cell populations that are interested, how they're separating from one another, and sort of their behavior based on that single cell RNA seq. But what the Cosmics instrument can do now is it takes that UMAP, but it also adds a Z component. So we're able to look at where those cells are actually distributed throughout the tissue, how they're sitting in space, what cells they're sitting next to, and you can start to answer different second order questions that can supplement that single cell RNA seq data that you have. For those of you that are interested, of course, you can import your single cell RNA seq data into our bioinformatics pipeline, and we can use that to help identify specific cell populations. So a very high level overview of how we do this on the Cosmics instrument. So we do the transcript localization. Again, that's that 64 bit encoding, 16 rounds of hybridization that we go through. And we give each mRNA transcript an X, Y, and Z location. And we also place it into a nuclear cytoplasmic or cell membrane compartment. And we do that after we do the transcript localization, we stain the tissue with morphology markers and we use the same five morphology markers for each tissue. We find that the specific combination of markers that we use, which are two membrane markers, a B2M, a CD298, which is a, an MHC class one marker and also a sodium transporter, are pretty much ubiquitous across cells. We use a DAPI nuclear stain, a CD3, a CD45, and a pancytokeratin stain. And then using the transcript localization and those morphology markers to outline the tissue architecture, we use an open source tool, which is based off of CellPros, which is an AI assisted um, algorithm to create individual masks around each of these individual cell populations. We then take each of those eight to nine Z stacks, we compress it into two dimensions, and then we do our analysis. And these are some of the analyses that we do do. So this is a non-small cell lung carcinoma sample, thousand plex RNA species, each of these individual dots that you can see um, here uh, correspond to an individual cell population, which you can see outlined here in the legend. On the left-hand side and sort of the beige color, this is the tumor, and this is an immune-rich stroma, and you can see that these cells are starting to infiltrate into the tumor. So this is one of the first order questions that you can ask. What cells do I have in my tissue section? Where are they arranged in space? So cell types, cell maps. We can also look at specific structures in the tissue. So using a, a type of neighborhood analysis, we can cluster specific cells um, together. So in this example here, we're looking at a, a tertiary lymphoid structure. We can look at the invasive boundary, how specific structures are clustering together in the tissue. So in addition to the UMAP that we find to look at the cell types and cell maps, when we do create these micro niches in the tissue, we can actually move those over into a UMAP so you can see are they clustering together? And then you see the distribution of those across this, um, the tissue as well. If we do a deep dive into differential expression of specific markers of interest, again, this is that non-small cell lung carcinoma data set. We're looking at the immune stroma here on the right, looking specifically at a macrophage population. You can see the expression of SPP1 or osteopoietin in this particular example. And you can see on the more uh, proximal end of this, um, this area that the macrophages are expressing osteopoietin here. If we look at a second marker of HLA distribution in these macrophages, we can see that there's a, a lot of expression of HLA towards the more dorsal area um, of this particular area of the tissue. And if we overlay that with the morphology markers, you can see a clear separation of osteopoietin and HLA expression in these macrophages within the tissue. Now, I'm not a cancer biologist. I'll leave it to the cancer biologist to understand what the meaning of that is. But you can see the types of information that you can glean from this, uh, from this data. We also have receptor ligand interactions. So over a hundred different pairs are available within our data set. We use um, a, a specific algorithm to calculate these. If you look at the example here on the left, on the X axis, we have individual patients here on the X axis. And we have our receptor ligand pairs 
on the y-axis, and you can clearly see distinct uh, patterns of ligand receptor pairings between different patients. Right. So if we can, you know, look at different annotations of those parent uh, patients' responses to therapy, et cetera, we can start to understand, you know, potentially what's going on there with those folks. In terms of content that's available on the system, we have predefined panels, which I've already alluded to. At launch in Q4, we will have our 1,000 plex human universal cell characterization panel for RNA. We will have a 100 plex RNA panel for human IO. A 1000 plex mouse neuroscience panel, a 100 plex human IO protein panel, and a mouse neuroscience 100 plex protein panel as well. In Q4, early Q3, you'll be able to customize specific genes as a spike in or standalone. So you can add 7 to 50 to the 1000 plex panel or 7 to 10 to the 100 plex panel. And then later on in 2023, you can do a full de novo custom panel up to 1000 plex, selecting your genes of interest, uh, should you choose to. In terms of the, uh, we have a publication uh, that's in bioarchive. This should be uh, published um, in, in, in a high impact journal within the next couple of weeks, I hope. So this provides you with an introduction to our cosmics chemistry. It shows you um, system performance metrics and also demonstrated applications. So you can read about this in your own time. And then we also have a publicly available data set. So this is a non-small cell lung carcinoma data set looking at almost 1,000 transcripts in formal and fixed uh, paraffin embedded tissue, mapping over 800,000 cells and 260 million transcripts. We will have a second uh, 1,000 plex mouse neuroscience panel that we'll be launching in the next two days that will also be available on the, on the website so for any of you groups uh, who are interested in bioinformatics and getting your hands on SMI data prior to getting your own data, of course, you can download these data sets um, and you can play around with them. Some interesting metrics about this data set. So we looked at five different patients across eight different sections, looking at over 800,000 cells, 96% of those passed QC metrics. So if we compare that to a single cell RNA-seq experiment where you only get 65% capture efficiency, you can see that the level of detection that we have using this type of technology in space um, is highly sensitive. Of course, we can't go up to whole transcriptome yet, but you can identify um, a lot of different cells. Median transcripts per cell for this particular um, experiment were 265. I have seen them go up to almost 900. Um, and the other thing I wanna focus on is the RNA quality. So we don't um, check for RIN scores or DV200 scores on either the Geomix or the Cosmix instrument. But we did so here, and what I'd like to point out is the RIN values were 2.4 to unmeasurable in these samples, and the DB200 scores were 65% down to 21%. And then over 94% of those cells still passed QC. So even in highly degraded tissues, we were still able to profile um, extremely effectively. So if you were to run this on another type of technology, um, you would be unsuccessful. This is an example of the 108 plex protein panel that we launched at AACR roughly five weeks ago. This is an FFPE melanoma sample again in the yellow inlay here on the right hand side, you can see each of these individual bins corresponds to individual proteins and you can see the variation in expression across the tissue. This is a little vignette into the thousand plex mouse neuroscience panel. This is on fresh frozen tissue. We used an NB clust analysis system to, uh, or algorithm, excuse me, to identify cell populations. 97% of these uh, cells passed QC metrics. And this is some of the interesting data that we pulled out of here. So we were able to look at specific cell populations and their distribution across this issue down to single cell subcellular resolution. So all of this data um, as well will be hosted on the cloud, as I mentioned, so that we'll be able to include Geomix data in Q4 of this year and Cosmix SMI through our spatial biology portal. So this will enable global collaborations if you're working with groups across Korea or in other parts of the world. You'll be able to host all of your imaging um, on the, the cloud-based as well, which will save you on your uh, local storage and compute. Um, this is all completely scalable as well, um, and it will be hosted online, um, and we will be able to um, upload individual modules or essentially apps onto the system to look at different data visualization tools, 
um, that will be available to you, not only through Nanostring, um, but our, our research community as well. So finally, um, here, just the differences between the platform. Again, with the Geomix instrument, we have unlimited Plex, right? This can do unbiased biomarker discovery. You know, very important for clinical uh, type of translational studies as well, and discovery in that space to identifying signatures, for example. Completely automated as well uh, with the Lycabond RX system. Truly multiomic, so RNA and protein, even on the same sample. Uh, in FFPE, fresh frozen and organoids. Tremendous amount of flexibility on what you can use on the system. And it's designed to adapt to specific tissue structures. So we can outline specific areas of the tissue that we're, that we're interested in. And again, this will be hosted on the cloud as well. And then of course, I've gone over in a lot of detail just recently here about the Cosmix instrument. So those are the differences between our two platforms. So if you do have any questions about the Geomix instrument or the Cosmix instrument, please feel free to reach out to myself uh, or to my colleagues at Philly Korea or Suk Lee, who is our distribution manager there um, in Korea for any questions you might have. And thank you very much for listening today. And um, I'll open up the floor for any questions should you have them. Thank you for your presentation, Marsha. Uh, 선생님들 궁금하신 사항 있으시면 마이크를 켜고 말씀해 주시거나 채팅창에 질문 사항을 남겨 주시면 답변 드리도록 하겠습니다. 혹은 지금 당장은 생각이 나지 않더라도 추후에라도 궁금하신 사항 있으시면은 어, 메일 주시면은 저희가 또 답변 드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다.